it's rare to see edge rushers that fall to the later rounds be that successful because it's a position that relies so heavily on athletic traits, and the NFL is pretty good at recognizing whether someone has the length or explosiveness to win against tackles at the next level. So guys that slip past the first couple rounds usually fall into one of two categories. You've got pass rushers who are really productive, a lot of times against weaker competition, and they just lack NFL caliber athleticism. And then you've got freak athletes who are projects to the extent that you're essentially going to have to teach them the position from the ground up. Rashad Weaver is kind of an interesting blend of both categories because he has a few elite traits and a few traits that are whatever the opposite of elite is. And his technique is about as refined as anyone in this class, but he'll be 24 before he takes a snap in the NFL, so it's hard to project too much development. For starters, he has phenomenal length, and more importantly, he actually knows how to use his length effectively. When he wins reps, his length is usually the key contributor. He's also really strong, and even though his strength advantage will be smaller in the NFL, he definitely won't struggle in that area. And he's already a technician when it comes to leverage and hand placement with his pass rushing moves, and then he's great at building counter moves off of other moves he used earlier in a game. His primary weaknesses are acceleration and change of direction, his first step is just not good at all, and tackles are routinely able to get into their pass sets before he's even off the line. And anytime he has to change direction or move laterally, whether that's defending a read option or pursuing a quarterback that's stepping up in the pocket, he sort of looks like he's on stilts. I want to go through the pass rushing moves that Rashad Weaver uses one by one, starting with the bull rush. This is the most basic power move, usually the first one that a defensive lineman learns, and the goal is to establish contact with both hands and then drive the offensive lineman backwards. It's really important to have good length because it makes it a lot easier to establish contact first, but it's also important to have low pad level because that gives you better leverage to move the lineman. On this play, Weaver makes contact early with his hands right under the shoulder pads, and he keeps his helmet lower than the tackles. He actually gets a little bit too low here, but he does a good job of recovering and regaining balance. A bull rush is most effective at collapsing the pocket, and a lot of times you need a counter move on top of the bull rush to actually get to the quarterback. Later in the Syracuse game, instead of driving the tackle directly backwards, Weaver turns him counterclockwise and rips the inside arm to get past him. On this play, Notre Dame's right tackle Robert Hainsey uses his hands a lot better than the tackle from Syracuse and creates a stalemate, but Weaver still wins the rep because he has lower pad level. Building off of the standard bull rush, Weaver has a really effective pull rip move. With this move, he's going to pull the tackle's outside arm with his outside hand and then dip the inside shoulder and flatten his path to the quarterback. This move is really good at taking advantage of tackles when they overextend or when they're too far back on their heels. If we look at this play versus NC State, the tackle leans over too far and puts too much weight on his toes. So Weaver pulls the outside arm to get the tackle even more off balance and then dips the inside shoulder and gets past him. Compared to his bull rush, when Weaver utilizes the pull rip, he has a tendency to be a little bit too upright when he engages with blocks. Sometimes he still beats the tackle, but being technically sound in all phases will be important in the NFL. Another move Weaver uses a lot is what's called a chop rip, where he violently chops the tackle's outside arm, which gives him access to the edge. There are a couple variations of this move that you'll see. Sometimes the first thing a pass rusher does is chop the outside arm, but other times he'll jam the tackle's chest before attacking the outside. Weaver really only ever does the first variation, and I think he could have more consistent success with the chop rip if he added a jam at the beginning, because that can help make up for his lack of bend and explosiveness. The chop rip allows Weaver to use a tackle's adjustment and preparation against him. When a tackle goes up against someone like Weaver who wins with their length so often, they're going to prioritize establishing contact early. But the downside of that is that you're extending your arms out and making them more vulnerable to a counter move. On this play, Clemson tackle Jordan McFadden makes first contact with Rashad Weaver, but Weaver was baiting him into doing that. He could have jammed McFadden first, but he blatantly leaves his chest available, knowing that as soon as McFadden extended, he could chop the outside arm and get to the edge. As he approaches McFadden, he keeps his arms active and high to make the chop as violent as possible. 
Looking at another play, this time against Boston College, we see Weaver use the same move, but executed a little bit differently. Instead of showing an open chest to bait the tackle, he angles his body in a way that the tackle doesn't have the ability to land a clean punch. He attacks the edge like he's doing a normal speed rush, knowing that at a certain point the tackle will extend his arms to seal him off, and he can chop the outside arm then. On this play, Clemson tackle Walker Parks sees the chop coming and is able to neutralize the pass rush. When Weaver brings his inside arm up, Parks pulls his outside arm back to avoid the chop, and then he quickly punches with both hands and seals Weaver off. This is more of a good play by Parks than a bad play by Weaver, but good tackles can recognize what you're doing if you show your hand too early. Weaver builds off the chop rip into a spin move where he chops the outside arm, rolls inside against the tackle, and then wraps his outside arm around the tackle's back to seal him off. I really like his hand usage when he does this spin move, and it's another area where he uses his length well, but it would be a lot more effective if he had a more explosive first step. Tackles in the NFL won't really be scared of Weaver beating them around the edge, so they're not going to be overextending outside to the extent they would need to be for Weaver to win with the inside counter. Another move Weaver has is what's called a long arm, which is similar to a bull rush except you only use one arm. You can reach further with one arm with two, which is why it's easier to dunk with one hand than both hands, but it's more critical that you land your punch with accuracy and power. The long arm is effective because it frees up the other hand for counter moves in either direction. And the last move I'll mention is the swim move, which Weaver uses as an extension of a lot of his other moves. This is something I expect him to use a lot in the NFL because it's likely that he'll struggle to get the edge consistently, so countering inside could be a lot more effective. On this play, Weaver takes his initial step inside to free up some space on the edge. He then makes contact with both hands, but does so outside and on top of the shoulder pads instead of inside and under them like normally. This is important because right here he's trying to go over the tackle rather than through him. He then brings the inside arm up and pushes the tackle's shoulder with his outside arm, giving him space for the swim move, and then he seals off the tackle's back with the inside arm just like he does with the spin. I think Rashad Weaver is an edge defender with a very high floor because his pass rushing skill set is so refined. His age and lack of explosiveness make it unlikely he'll see a ton of development, but he has a chance to contribute right away. My main concern with Weaver is how he fits into Tennessee's defensive scheme. A 3-4 defense asks its edge rushers to drop into coverage pretty often, but a 4-3 rarely does. Harold Landry dropped into coverage 139 times in 2020, and Weaver only dropped into coverage once. And in addition to not having experience in pass coverage, Weaver doesn't really have the quickness to be very good in that area either. I know most people don't really consider pass coverage when thinking about edge rushers, but it could be something that keeps him off the field in certain situations. He's 6'5", 270, which is ironically the exact same height weight as Danico Autry, so I'd be interested to see if Tennessee ends up using Weaver as a sort of edge D-line hybrid. If you like my film breakdowns, subscribe to my channel for more, and also follow me on Twitter and I'll put the link on the screen.